The coveted Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. line of whiskeys features two somewhat easier to find offerings like the single barrel and small batch, along with limited yearly releases like this year's 18 year marriage, last year's Amaranth of the Gods and other bottles only seen on secondary for crazy prices like Tornado Survivor Warehouse C, the Four Grain, the Cured Oak, the Seasoned Oak and more. But one offering that is also a somewhat easy to find staple is the Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. Rye, which is the only rye in the entire collection to date. So like the majority of E.H. Taylor releases, Straight Rye is bottle and bond and also one of the more interesting bottles in the lineup since unlike the rest of the Colonel Taylor lineup that says distilled at Old Fashioned Copper Distillery, which was what the name of the distillery Colonel Taylor purchased in 1870 and eventually became today's Buffalo Trace. The label on the rye says distilled, aged, and bottled by Old Fashioned Copper Distillery, but also specifies DSP KY113 and DSP KY12 which corresponds to both Buffalo Trace and Barton in Bartstown respectively, which is another distillery owned by Sazerac. Buffalo Trace says that this rye is distilled at the Barton 1792 distillery and then bottled at Buffalo Trace and all E.H. Taylor products use old fashioned copper as a tribute to him. Now, whether this is true or not is unknown, but Buffalo Trace is known to do some funny things on their labels. The Van Winkle range, for example, which claims to be from Old Rip Van Winkle Distillery, despite the fact that no distillery of this name ever existed. All right, so now to the review here. Buffalo Trace does not share mash bills, but according to their website, this rye whiskey is an altogether different recipe and profile than the loved Sazerac rye. They have two different rye mash bills. One is a low rye mash bill that is used to make Sazerac rye, Sazerac 18, Thomas H. Handy, and even the Van Winkle Family Reserve rye. The other is a high rye mash bill made exclusively for the Colonel Taylor rye only. It's bottled and bond, it's 50% ABV or 100 proof, with an MSRP around 75 to 80 bucks. All right, so the Colonel E.H. Taylor Rye, it's one of those bottles, you know, when you think about Colonel Taylor and how, you know, hard to find they are in some areas, the rye is one of those along the lines of the small batch and even sometimes a single barrel that I do see often, you know, when I travel around. The rye is usually available. A lot of the times it's kind of sitting on the shelf and I think because of the price point, when you compare it to some other cheaper available rise, it might not be such an easy buy for some consumers. It definitely wasn't for me. So wanted to give it a full review. Let's see if it's unique enough to stand out here. Let's go to the nose first. I'm actually surprised at how much oak and rye spice I'm getting on the nose right up front. Man, definitely a lot of rye spice coming through, some black pepper here getting some cinnamon and some really nice baking spices like you do with a really good rye. I'm trying to figure out if this is as high of a rye as uh, some may think it is. Some people, it's, in, it's, it's around like that 70 to 80% realm. Not really sure where it may lie here, but getting some nice mintiness to it, possibly like a, a, an apple or a pear note that's coming through as well. I'm getting, I'm getting a dark fruit, but it's coming across as grape. <laughs> like grape, uh, if you ever had Big League Chew, or uh, yeah, like Big League Chew grape uh, chewing gum, that's what it's getting, you know, but that's what's coming out of the nose to me. It's like sugary, sweet grape flavor, which is really interesting for rye. But grape is actually, you know, one of those flavors you do get with Buffalo Trace. I feel, you know, when you get some of those Eagle Rare picks, some of them can be a little bit like grape soda forward. I think some of that's coming through in the rye as well. Getting maybe the slightest hint of like an evergreen or pine type note, but not really much. It's weird. There's rye spice there, but there's also that, that Buffalo Trace sweetness that is really coming through 
to balance out the high rise spice. So let's go for a sip. Here we go. Oh, wow. Got a ton of vanilla up front. Some nice toasted oak and caramel. Yeah, it's a really interesting mix of sweet and spice, almost like um, sweet and savory, almost. Man, cinnamon, baking spices all along the back. The black pepper and rye spice really comes through here on the back end, way more than I was expecting. Let's go for another sip here. Okay, mellowed out a bit on the second sip. Okay, now I'm getting some more of the of some typical rye spices there. Again, slightest, slightest hint of a dill note, not a lot. You get some really nice toasted rye spice here. I think it's a combination of the barrel and the high rye mash bill, almost coming through as like dark, dark caramel, like borderline, almost chocolate a little bit. Yeah, it's sweet and savory at the same time. Again, you get the caramels, vanillas, that grape note that I was getting on the nose is definitely coming through on the palate as well. Very interesting uh, rye on the on the palate so far. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, this is nice. This is a really good rye. I mean, it's really, I love that combination. The sweet and the savory are really coming through. You get those typical rye, spice, mint, slight hint of dill, the peppery note mixed with that. Uh, that that really nice sweet flavors that you get from Buffalo Trace. If I had to venture a guess, I would say this is somewhere between six to nine years old. Uh, I know bottle and bond, you have to be at least four, but typically, you know, some of the bigger distillers will put older juice in there. Uh, I think definitely this has to be anywhere from six to nine years old. I've heard nine more often than not. All right, one last sip here, then I'm gonna compare it to Sazerac Rye. Yeah, when it comes to the finish, the finish definitely finishes as more of a rye forward uh, type whiskey. That's where you get the baking spices, you're getting the red hots, the pepper, the cinnamon, maybe a little bit of a licorice note there. Not very, not a lot though, it's very faint, but it's there slightly. I think I'm only getting it just because I'm very sensitive to black licorice. Black licorice is one of those notes I hate, um, just personally. So whenever I get the slightest hint of it, I tend to pick it up. But this one, it's not, it's not bad at all. I think you're getting more of the flavor up front, especially in that back end. I think it's balancing out nicely. Yeah, it actually kind of feels a little bit hot on the back end. It definitely leaves a lingering pepper, cinnamon, you know, cinnamon red hot type candy spice. You know, I, you've heard me talk about that a few times. You know, it's definitely got some toasted oak. Um, more oak than I thought was gonna be in this, you know, especially given what they think the age is. Um, that's why I'm thinking it's a little bit older here. I think it's a little that six to nine year range. It's got a really unique combination of being a high rye mash bill with that quintessential signature Buffalo Trace where they pull out, you know, really sweet flavors from their barrels and, you know, where their stuff is aging. It's, uh, again, that sweet and savory profile is a really unique, um, a really unique feature in this whiskey. Let's compare it to Baby Saz. All right, so now we're gonna compare it to Baby Saz here or Sazerac Rye. Um, now, remember the difference in this is that this is just purely rye and barley, where this is probably a lower rye and also has some corn in it to give some more sweetness to go along with uh, the barley as well. So let's compare the noses and see what we get here. Yeah, the Baby Saz has more of like a bubble gum type thing going on in it. Definitely some more corn sweetness coming through. You do get some, some rye spice there. I'm getting a little bit more of that licorice note here in this one as well. Maybe a hint of cherry too in the baby size. Yeah, it was the Colonel Taylor. More of that age is coming through, I think. This, this I would definitely think, is, is uh, younger, whereas this is just coming through with some more rounded toasted oak notes, a lot of deeper, richer rye, caramel spice. Very different when you compare the noses. All right, let's try the baby size real quick. Yeah, the Baby Saz is definitely on the sweeter side, not nearly as complex as the Colonel Taylor. Again, it's not giving me nearly the bite and the, and the experience that I'm getting with the Colonel Taylor. The Colonel Taylor, I, don't, I forgot to mention, I think, is a, it's definitely a little bit more uh, viscous on the palate. It's got a really nice mouthfeel to it, it's creamy, whereas this is just coming off a little bit watered down. I mean, let's be honest, Sazerac is, is I think, kind of made for you know, cocktails to make the classic you know, Sazerac cocktail. It is good for easy sipping, but definitely a step down in quality when compared to this. Let's go for one last sip. 
Yeah, it's very sweet and easy on the next sip. Not a lot going on. Again, really good for cocktails, I think. A little bit of a peppery spice. It's definitely sweeter. I'm getting more of a grassy note, getting that kind of sweet, but evergreeny or pine type note to it as well. But not really a lot going on when it comes to, you know, mouthfeel or finish, especially when compared to the Colonel Taylor Rye. The Sazerac Rye is also 90 proof and Again, this is one of those that's a little bit harder to find nowadays. This is about 30 to 35 bucks, I think, uh, the last time I bought one. Uh, I think there's better rye. I'd probably rather go for the Old Forester rye if I'm looking at the Sazerac rye, which I think is a more interesting mixer. It's a higher proof and it's cheaper. All right, so price for this is around $70, $75. I've seen it on the secondary market value for up to $150 to $160 sometimes, which I think is a little bit nuts for this bottle. Availability on this is okay. Again, it's Buffalo Trace. If you wanna call it's Buffalo Trace availability, <laughs> which should probably be its own category. It's one of the EH Taylors though, aside from small batch, that I do see more often than not when I do walk into a store that has EH Taylor in stock. Like I mentioned, I have passed on buying a bottle of this many times due to the fact that the price is about that $75 to $80 range with so many quality rides at $50 or under. I needed some convincing to buy this one, which brings me to value. For value, I say the value on this is even. I think it's worth that $75 to $80, bucks, no more than that. I say that because I think the bottle is about six to nine years old. It's unique enough to stand out from other ryes in that price tier, like Whistlepig, Willet, and some other higher aged MGP ryes. Do I recommend this one? Now I had to think about it, but I'm gonna go with yes. Only because there's only one Buffalo Trace high rye mash bill, just rye and malted barley, that's only unique to this specific bottle. And that combination of that Buffalo Trace signature sweetness uh, that they get out of the barrels does enough for me to recommend. High rye mash bills are hard to find at a good price with good age and quality as well. And I think the flavors here do a great job of offering something unique and delicious. With that said, I would not pay any more than 75 to 80 bucks for this. I think the value is even for what is in the bottle. Uh, if this is too hard to find for some of you, look for Michter's Barrel Proof Rye, Pikesville from Heaven Hill, and even the new uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye. All three of those bring some unique flavors that are sweet, that are spicy, offer some higher age at a good price. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the Colonel E.H. Taylor Straight Rye Whiskey. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram and follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this, if you've compared it to other ryes. Where do you think it falls? Did you get that sweet and savory flavor profile like I was? And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Master Drum. Take care.